connective tissue and as the name suggests it has something to do with connections and is a part of all connecting substances of our body like bones blood and fat and what exactly makes blood red the fluid part of blood the matrix is actually colorless and it's called plasma the plasma contains proteins salts and hormones so in this plasma you have some red blood cells what we call rbcs white blood cells wbcs and platelets floating around and it's the rbcs as you guessed which give the blood the distinctive red color and again it's a substance called hemoglobin inside the rbc which causes it to be red so what is the most important function of blood transportation yes but transportation of what oxygen oxygen that drives every single cell in your body the hemoglobin in your rbc carries oxygen and supplies it to every cell in your body and you know what your brain uses 20% of that oxygen which enters your blood stream the brain only makes up 2% of our body mass yet consumes more oxygen than any other organ in the body making it extremely susceptible to damage related to oxygen deprivation so breathe deep to keep your brain happy and swimming in oxygenated cells now the heart the muscle man of the circulatory system let's take our memory back to cardiac muscle pumps the blood all through the body blood just cannot flow because of gravitation you know in fact the human heart you know creates that much pressure enough pressure to squirt blood an astounding 30 feet uh, there used to be a medieval misbelief that aristocratic blood was blue it's of a spanish origin sangria yule which means of blue blood and was used to refer to someone of very high rank and birth and let's keep the suspense going i'm going to let you find out why why is it that royal families are said to have or said to have believed to have blue blood our blood is red for sure because of the iron content in the hemoglobin that i spoke about just now there's some blue blood creatures spiders and crabs make for good examples they have something similar to blood it's called hemolymph and there is a copper based pigment in that which makes it blue what about white blood cells typically used in defense to protect our body against foreign invaders no they're not going to dish out a sword and armor from your body and get you war ready I am talking about invaders at a microscopic level. Viruses, parasites, the ones that aren't really supposed to be in our body but are there. We need to get rid of them real fast and the WBCs actually help you do that. Now, platelets are found only in mammals and they help in the clotting of blood. So, three major blood types are BCs, WBCs, platelets all swimming around happily in the plasma. The next type of connective tissue that you should know about is the bone. The framework that supports the body and forms the most valuable archaeological finds due to which we are able to find out so many evolutionary relationships and answer some critical questions like where we exactly came from. One interesting fact about bones is that you are born with more bones than when you die. Yes, really. Babies are born with 300 bones. but by the time you reach adulthood the number is reduced to 206 that's because some bones fuse together as you get older and your feet account for one quarter of all your body's bones you may not really give your feet much thought but they are home to more bones than any other part of your body so how many exactly of the 200 or so bones in the body of the 206 bones in the body the feet contain a whooping 50 Now bones come in a very hard matrix made up of calcium and phosphorus. You must have seen all these calcium supplements, right? That is for strengthening your bones. Now two bones can be connected to each other by another type of connective tissue called the ligament. When you run and twist your ankle, a minor injury that could happen to you is a ligament tear. A major injury would be a fracture. Now that's where there's a crack in your bone and if you ever had it you'll know it it's very very painful. The ligament is very elastic with very little matrix and then you have tendons which connect muscles to bones. They are filled with fibers and not that elastic. Okay so to summarize ligament is bone to bone and tendon is muscle to bone. So ligaments and tendons two important type of connections. cartilage is found in your nose and your ears 
try twisting them a bit and you can see that this is actually possible however you cannot bend the bones in your arms or legs both are types of connective tissue but see how different they are and how does it look it has some widely spaced cells and a solid matrix embedded with proteins and sugars now let's talk about some of the softer connective tissues the tissue that connects the skin and the muscle all around the blood vessels and in the bone marrow the bone marrow fills up the hollow part of the bone it's a little bit airier if i'm allowed to use that word compared to bone and tendon and this ligament is called areolar tissue this tissue is like a medical emergency kit as well and helps in the repair of damaged tissues another soft tissue that you would read about or learn about is the fat tissue or the adipose tissue that does all the cushioning and in some cases the extra cushioning of our body and where is this found this is easy between the skin and the internal organs the cells of this tissue are filled with fat globules and this also will serve as an insulator so you have blood cells bone ligament tendons areolar tissue adipose tissue all unique all special all important and all different types of connective tissue if you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these like and subscribe to our channel now